So the Windows Virtual Desktop Spring 2020 update is now generally available. It's all managed through the Azure portal and it's easier than ever to deploy a Windows Virtual Desktop environment. I'm Mike Roderick and I'm going to show you what the pros know. So here I am in the Azure portal, and as I said, with the Spring 2020 update, everything for Windows Virtual Desktop is now handled directly through the Azure portal because it's ARM-based, so we manage it just like we would any other ARM-based objects. So let me show you how to deploy Windows Virtual Desktop and just how easy it can be. All right, so I'm gonna start by navigating over to my tree over here on the side. I've already pinned Windows Virtual Desktop over here. If you haven't, you can simply go up to your search bar and search for Windows Virtual Desktop, and I'm gonna click on that. And that brings me to this single pane of glass where I can manage everything to do with Windows Virtual Desktop. You'll see over here on the left-hand side, I've got my host pools, my application groups, workspaces, and users. So it can all be managed from right here. That's fantastic. No more PowerShell, no more making sure that Windows Virtual Desktop has permission to reach into my Azure tenant. It's all done right through here. All right, so I'm gonna start by simply clicking this button here, create a host pool. That's gonna get the process started and it's gonna launch a wizard. Again, because it's ARM-based, we're using JSON templates. Simply fill in your information. It prompts you for what it needs. You fill it in, you click next, 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 and you're off to the races. It's really pretty amazing. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in first and take a look at our choices and then I'll zoom back out and fill those in. Uh, you can see across the top there that we are dividing this up into basically five tabs. Basics, virtual machine, workspace, tags, review, and create. And below that, you can see things like subscription, right? What subscription I'm using. I'm gonna create a new resource group, obviously recommended, but if you already have one that you wanna include or store these resources in, feel free to do so. We're gonna generate a name for our host pool, decide where we wanna store that metadata information. In my case, you can see East US is already selected, but you're free to choose any region you have available for you. I can decide whether or not this is a validation environment. Uh, oops, and I zoomed back out there, sorry. Uh, and then below that, I've got my host pool type, and I'm gonna come right back to that in just a second. So let me choose my, I'm gonna create a new resource group, and I'm gonna call this a WT, P, N, right? Oh, sorry, K, for what the pros know. How do you spell no? Yeah, Mike knows. All right, uh, my host pool name, I'm gonna call this one my Win 10 Multi. If I can type, uh, I'm gonna leave that region East US, and then down at the bottom again, I'm gonna choose my host pool type, and I've got two choices personal or pooled. Personal meaning each user gets assigned a specific VM or session host. Pooled mean I'm going to uh, use multiple users per VM. And this is where I can take advantage of that Windows 10 multi-session uh, ISO or SKU. That's fantastic. That's the option that I'm going to choose. So I'm going to choose pooled. Now, when I choose pooled, I do have some additional choices to make. How many users am I going to allow per VM or session host? I can set that max number of users. I also have the load balancing algorithm that I need to choose. Breadth first means if I have like five session hosts in my pool, I'm gonna spread each user that connects across those VMs equally, and then start back at the first one and spread them across. The other option is gonna be depth first, where I stack the sessions up on a single VM until I hit that maximum that we set right above there before I move on to the next session host and start assigning sessions there. All right, so I'm gonna say, let's do a maximum of 10. This is something you would adjust based on your VM size that you create and the workload that your users are gonna be putting. I'm gonna leave that as breadth first as well. Then we'll click next to virtual machines and this screen looks really easy because by default it says no. If you had some pre-built machines that you wanted to use in your host pool, you could choose those, we can add them after the fact or we can go ahead and create virtual machines now which is gonna be the most common option and I'm gonna go ahead and choose yes for that. And then you'll see we have to make some decisions about the VMs that we're gonna create. So it defaults to the same resource group that I've created my other resources in. You can see my East US location. Below that, I've got the size. It's gonna to default to a standard D2SV3. That can change by the time you get in here. But really, you know, you're free to pick whatever you want. You can click that blue link there that says change size and it'll give you a list of all the different VM sizes that are available. So if you want more virtual CPUs, if you want more memory on those session hosts to support more users or to support a heavier workload by your users, feel free to click that and pick a different size VM. Below that, you'll see the number of VMs, how many session hosts do I wanna create in this pool? 
I'm going to give it a prefix. These machines are going to be joined to our Active Directory domain, so that prefix, it'll, it'll add a dash zero dash one uh, to that name for each one of our session hosts that it creates. And then below that, I've got my gallery. This is where I can choose the image. I'll show you my options here in just a second, as well as the disk type. I can do a standard or a premium SSD, depending on what I need for performance, right? How many IOPS do I really need there? Let me fill in some of this information. I'm going to leave the defaults at the top. Number of VMs, I'm gonna leave that at one just for this demo to make sure it completes it quickly. Uh, and then for my prefix, I'll do uh, what the pros know. It'll add that dash zero dash one. And then for gallery, I'm going to leave that on gallery. You can also do custom images. Talk about this in, in uh, uh, other videos that we've done, uh, or you can check out IT Pro TV where we're talking about creating a custom image. I'm going to leave it on gallery and choose one of the pre builts And this is really cool. All right, this is the only place that you can access that Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session. That means I can have multiple users logged into the same VM, hosting multiple sessions at the same time. Allows me to maximize my resources, maximize the utilization of those VMs, keep my costs down. Really cool. You can see I've got version 1909, or I can jump up to 2004, whichever one you use. Also note the options that already have Microsoft 365 apps installed. That's right, I can... Pick one where I don't even have to go install Office. It's all going to be there already, which is what I am going to do because I like to keep things simple. All right. If you had a custom image or those one of those images didn't work for you, wanted to pick another image, you're free to do so. You can see this link right here. Browse all images and disks. This will take you out to the Microsoft Gallery, or if you've created a custom image and you've uploaded as a shared image, you can browse and you can select it from there. So if you need to do custom line of business apps, create that custom image, that's where you would go. I'm going to scroll down a little further and you'll see that I have my standard SSD chosen. Uh, I'm going to leave that. I'm okay with the performance of that. Below here, we get into network and security. This is an important part, right? Because those session hosts are going to need to join your domain, whether that's an Azure AD domain services, whether you've got a hybrid environment and you're connecting to an on-premises Active Directory, the subnet that you connect these session hosts to needs access to that domain controller so that it can choose or so that it can join the domain, just like you would right in a normal physical environment. So I'm going to need to change that to the appropriate subnet. Same as that client VMs. I happen to have a hybrid environment set up here, and I've got a site to site VPN running from Azure back to my on premises network, and that's my network that's connected so that they'll be able to find uh, and join that domain. You can change the network security group if you want to. You can provide public inbound ports, right? You can add a public IP address. Not necessary for Windows Virtual Desktop to work. Really cool thing about this, I do not need to give these session hosts public IPs in order for users to be able to connect to their Windows Virtual desktop. So only if you had some special circumstance uh, that you needed that, do you need to change that. Uh, below that, I can choose a specific domain if I had child domains that I wanted to add these uh, session hosts to, or if I had a specific OU that I want to create the computer account in, I can choose yes and specify that there. Below that's the most important part where I've got my administrator account. I'm going to have to zoom out so I can scroll down a little bit. Uh, this is where you need an account that has permissions to join that machine to the domain or machines, depending on how many sessions hosts you're creating. I have a standard account that I've delegated the rights to join machines to the domain. Best practice, really don't want to use an administrator account if you can avoid it. Only needs permission to join the machine to the domain. So I'm going to add that account here, specify that UPN. Can't type and talk at the same time, so let me focus on that. Uh, and then that password, uh, and you have to do that twice to make sure you typed it correctly. Uh, the one gotcha right here, this does not verify that you've typed in the correct password or that that user account has the appropriate permissions. You can go all the way through this template, and as long as you provided a, a valid UPN or in the proper format, and a password that matches the, the validation wizard will say your template passes. And then when you try to run the template to deploy your WDV environment, um, that's when you'll get the error, failed to join the domain. Uh, and usually this is the big culprit. So come back, check, make sure you typed in uh, that username properly, that that user account you chose has the appropriate permissions, and you've typed in that password correctly. So hopefully I've got that done correctly. We're going to click on Next. Uh, and this is where you create your workspace. 
right? You have to assign your uh, application groups to a workspace. Workspaces are what the users actually connect to when they're connecting to Windows Virtual Desktop. We can deploy, and I'm not going to have uh, LastPass remember that password. Um, we can deploy the entire desktop, which is done by default. We can also go back and create additional application groups if we just want to provide basically a remote app experience. Uh, check out some of our other videos, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but you do have to assign it to a work group before this will work. If you choose to do leave it on no here, that's fine, but just understand that before this will work, you're going to have to go back and create and register that workspace. I'm going to go ahead and choose yes and do it now, right? Uh, I don't have any workspaces created yet, so I'm going to use that link that says create new. And we'll go ahead and fill that in. I'm going to call this a what the pros know dash uh, workspace, something like that. And I'll click OK. All right, so now I've got that, and that's it. That's all you have to do is create, give it a name, and it'll create the workspace. And by default, it's going to create a single application group known as the desktop application group, and it's going to register it to that workspace. So that out of the box, all I have to do is finish this wizard, and my users can connect to a full Windows 10 desktop experience. All right, so I'll go ahead and click Next. Tags, administration, billing purposes. If you use tags in your environment, you'll have those available. You can fill those out there. I don't have any, so I'm going to go ahead and click Next, Review, and Create. So now what it's doing is it's building that JSON template, and it's going to validate and make sure I apl app applied or provided all of the appropriate information that it's going to need to do this deployment. So there we go. I've got my green validation passed right across the top. So I am going to click Create, and that's going to start the process. Now, honestly, this will take maybe 8, 10, 12 minutes. Some of that's going to depend on your region and, and the size of machine you chose and things like that, but it's not going to take very long. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit of TV magic. We're going to go away, and we come back, we will have our Windows Virtual Desktop environment deployed. All right, there we go. We have a green check mark. It says my deployment is complete. Here I can see that we started at all right, 12.22 p.m. on the nose. I did not do that intentionally. Uh, and then if I look at my system time right down here, we are looking at 12.33. So if we do the math, uh, about 11 minutes on that deployment was all it took. All right. Now there's a link here I can go to resource. Let's see where that one takes me. That takes me right out to the host pool, all right, which is cool. But I'm going to show you if I go back to the dashboard and I choose my Windows Virtual Desktop, we come back out to that single pane. This is really where I need to get used to managing uh, because I can manage all of my different aspects. I can see and I will select host pools that I now have that Win 10 multi host pool. All right. I can go to workspaces. And I can see, and we'll talk about in other videos, I'm going to break this down a little bit further, talk about all of the, the different components, but it's all there. My application groups, everything uh, has been created. I'm going to go back over to the host pools, and I'm going to drill into that host pool. All right, And we can see a lot of information about the host pool. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see that a little bit better. You can see I created one session host. You might have created more. Uh, and if I zoom back out so that I can scroll down, we'll see there is one application group and one application. That's that default desktop application group. They're going to name it whatever my host pool was, dash DAG by default. That represents the full desktop experience. I can go back and create additional application groups where I deploy individual applications. All right. So from my list here, I'm going to navigate over to application groups. I could always navigate here as well. And in there, there you'll see that Win10 Multi DAG, that default desktop application group. Because what I need to do is I need to navigate to this group um, and I need to create an assignment. Before anybody can connect to it, they need to be assigned. So in order for us to test this out, verify that everything is working, I need to create one assignment. So I'm going to, from my navigation tree, click Assignments over here. Then I'm going to click Add and Really need to pay attention to this. A big, big advantage of moving from that fall 19 to the spring 2020 update or this ARM-based Windows Virtual Desktop is the fact that I can do AD users or user groups. We talk about that in some other videos. Big advantage there. I have a group called WVD Users that I am going to select. Contains one member that we're going to use in our little test environment and click Select. So anybody in that group, I can now control who has access to Windows Virtual Desktop by simply modifying that group membership in Azure Active Directory. All right, so to test this out, what I want to do is I'm going to launch a private browser session. Not from there, Mike. There we go. 
And we're going to pretend that we're one of those users that's in that group and see if we can connect to that Windows Virtual Desktop environment. So the URL that we use to connect to that is going to be https colon slash slash uh, rdweb dot, uh, if I can remember this, wvd dot microsoft dot com. And you can see I've typed it in before, uh, slash arm slash web client. There's other ways we can get our users to connect to this later on. I can show you that in some other videos. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And that's going to connect me, but it's going to want me to authenticate. So I'm going to use that test account that I have. I'm going to log in. We'll provide that username. We'll type in the password. And then I've set up multi-factor authentication, something we're going to discuss in some other videos. Uh, so I need to, to apply that code. And we'll click verify. And so now it's reaching out and it's determining what assignments have been provided for this particular user. Uh, and there it is. You can see that WTPK slash WS, that was the workspace that we created. In there, one uh, group or one application group has been registered, that default desktop group. So I'm going to click on that. We'll click Allow. Much like you're doing a remote desktop connection, do you want to allow your printer, uh, your clipboard, do you want to allow them to come along with you, right? We can control a lot of this in the settings. Uh, we are going to have to authenticate again. They are working on some, oops, that is the wrong password. Let me do that again. They're working on some single sign-on options. The two different authentications, the first one was connect to WVD uh, services. This one is to connect to the actual Windows 10 desktop. And hopefully I typed in the correct password. And there we go. It's clicking in or it's logging in, spinning that up, you know, just like you were making, uh, just like you were logging into your physical machine, right? This is what your user can do from any device that has a HTML5 capable browser, whether that's a Windows 10 laptop, a Mac, uh, an iPad, doesn't matter, right? As long as they've got a browser, they can type in that URL and they can now access their Windows 10 work desktop. This is really incredible stuff. Uh, waiting for that to spin up just a little bit. There we go. We can see I wanted to show you uh, that I am in Windows 10. And remember, I chose an image that included the Microsoft 365 apps. So you can see I'm kind of rushing it. You can see it building the menu and things like that. This is my first log on, right? So just like you were logging on to a machine for the first time, a couple things in the Windows 10 start menu have to be built. But look, there's Excel, there's Word. I can launch any of those applications. So all within a matter of what, 15 minutes or so, uh, we were able to deploy a fully functional Windows virtual desktop environment. Now, granted, I, this is a very simple environment, right? We still have a lot of things we should worry about. We want to set up multi-factor authentication. We want to set up profiles using FS Logic so that no matter what virtual desktop they connect to, their my documents are the same. Uh, we want to think about you know, some other security things, some performance issues, uh, for sure. Right? So this is definitely just a very simple kind of a proof of concept. But how easy was that, right? This new Spring 2020 update allows me to configure everything and manage everything and monitor everything after the fact all through the portal. In fact, if we jump back over to the portal, right, I can go back out to my host pool. I can click on uh, users and we'll give it a second. We'll find uh, Aubrey. Right, I can click on that user uh, and I can see assignments that she's been assigned to. It looks like I need to refresh that. Uh, I might not have picked that up just yet. Let's see, there's the, the session is in place. You can see that she is connected to the machine. So I can monitor all of this uh, directly from the portal. I can do everything right from here. So there you have it. That is the Windows Virtual Desktop Spring 2020 update that has gone generally available, is now referred to as just Windows Virtual Desktop. Make sure you take a look at uh, some of our other videos we have on YouTube where we cover additional content dealing with Windows Virtual Desktop and jump over to IT Pro TV where I've got a hands-on series. I talk about a lot of the different aspects of Windows Virtual Desktop. All right, make sure you check out the playlist for more What the Pros Know videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.